Good evening, and welcome to tonight's panel, Science and Religion in China. Circumstances have meant that I'm unable to be with you in person to introduce the panel, so I'll be doing so through a short video clip. The contact of religion and science has been at the heart of the Occidental discipline of Sinology since its inception. Sinologists like Matteo Ricci combined their mastery of European technical knowledge with their fluency in classical texts as part of a larger agenda to transit Western religion into China. Sinology today still stands in the shadow of mammoth writers like Joseph Needham, the cover of whose Science and Civilization reminds us of the ways technical arts of China were deeply entangled with the cosmologies and practices of China's religions. Needham's insights into the technical dimensions of Chinese religion helped shape the Bellagio conferences, where he gathered with other influential figures whose imprints on the field of Chinese religions continue to inform us today. Needham's ideas about Taoism as a natural philosophy, which enabled and encouraged scientific research in China, were shaped by his ecumenical vision for the history of science, one that saw science as the equal property of all cultures, Western or no. Since Needham's time, we've come to understand Chinese religions in new ways. It has also become clear to some researchers, but not all, that the question of why China did not have a scientific revolution still retains a modernist, Eurocentric teleology of cultural progress. While foregrounding China's cultural achievements, it simultaneously distances and marginalizes the cultural systems in which they were embedded, discarding anything which does not reflect industrial capitalist concerns of technological development, efficiency, and progress. Francesca Bray sums up the position thus. In the history of technology, the standard view imposes the categories of industrial capitalism on non-Western societies. It then appears to have represented them adequately by identifying the causes of their failure to follow the Western path. Once that has been accounted for, what more is there to be said about it? One of the products of the industrial capitalist ideology, and Marx's responses to it, is that religion is portrayed as inhibiting science and progress, and is rendered as a quaint artifact of the past, rather than a meaningful worldview which problematizes contemporary norms. This occurs not only in Western representations of Chinese religion, but native Chinese ones as well, as the weight of the word science continues to create new inflections in how Chinese religions represent themselves, often on the basis of the very histories that seek to legitimate them. Here's one example. Ten years ago, a dissertation titled Taoist Medicine or Dao Jiao Yixue by Gai Jianmin was published in Sichuan, which surveyed Taoist medical practices through the ages, arguing that Taoist medicine was a product of the interaction of religion and science. The very same year, a bright young Taoist priest, Li Yi Daozhen of Chongqing, set out on a teaching mission to identify, research, and promulgate Taoist medicine, launching himself on what was at first a stellar and then meteoric career. He became known China-wide and beyond for his framing of Taoist medicine as an effective resource for modern-day health issues. Only last summer, the media was swamped with personal and financial allegations against him and his group, sensationalizing their activities and reframing what he had described as indigenous science as circus chicanery. Over a year before, I interviewed Abbott Lee and asked him whether or not he thought the term Taoist medicine was datable to Gai Jinmin's research. He agreed that it was, and added that he took it as his own personal mission and that of his temple to identify, research, and promulgate Taoist medicine. When I asked him about his use of scientific terminology, referring to the body as a laboratory, to meditation as experiment, and the objective knowledge that one could gain from it, this is what he said. Abbott Lee's answer attempts to reframe the debate, to redefine science in ways which accommodate Taoist repertoires by invoking East-West civilizational models and the politics of indigenous knowledge. These politicized scientific metaphors imply that while the burden of proof is on Taoism's shoulders, therein also lies the promise of opportunity. Yet these mechanistic representations, increasingly common in the technologized China of today, leave little room for the human dimensions of practices such as this healing ritual at Li Yi's temple, where a little boy regains his appetite and vigor 
after failed interventions by both Chinese and biomedicine. This short excerpt is intended to remind us, as we begin our panel, that the retroactive, dichotomized framing of science and religion as opposed contrary categories is not merely an inert academic problem of anachronism, but a volatile cultural extraction which is reshaping the face of Chinese religions today. In tonight's session, rather than assessing earlier culture for its compatibility with modern agendas, we ask, as Bray puts it, How did other societies see their world and the human place in it? What were their needs and desires? And how did the technologies they developed help fulfill those needs and desires? In today's first paper, Jeffrey Goebel examines how Tang emperors supported and engaged in the practices of esoteric Buddhism, Taoism, and Imperial Confucianism simultaneously. Paul Jackson then explores the connection between entomology and Chinese religious literature, arguing that linguistic categories illuminate how we perceive, evaluate, and react to the world. Steve Corey follows this with a study of pyroplastromancy in medieval China, arguing that this practice was constructed as a system of signs and helps us to envision the intersections of Chinese divination, religion, and science. Stuart Young then analyzes how Buddhist monks raised silkworms and produced silk from their cocoons, arguing that rather than being far removed from the cares of the material world, they were deeply involved in the industrial and technological development of China. Finally, Pierce Salguero focuses on a Buddhist scripture on the visualization of healing deities and medical procedures. He investigates the translation practices that allowed for this foreign medical knowledge to be understood and accepted in China. Although my co-author and I have pressing engagements which prevent us from attending, I wish the very best for tonight's presenters and hope everyone enjoys what promises to be a stimulating and insightful panel.